This video will review systems of inequalities. Inequalities are also sometimes called constraints. A system of inequalities is when you have more than one inequality for a problem. In this problem, if we read through it for a moment, you'll see that you're buying both bags of chocolates and bag of lollipops for a kid's charity. Um, each item costs a specific price, and each item will feed a certain number of children. We have some limitations or constraints. We have to feed at least 100 kids, and we have at most $50 to spend. So in this problem, we're going to try to figure out what possible combinations of chocolates and lollipops we can buy. To begin, it's asking us to write a constraint for the cost. To do this, I'm going to go through the problem and look at things that tell me about how much things cost and how much money I have to spend. If it was me on a test, I would mark it up as I go along. Looking at the problem, I see that bags of chocolates cost $5 or $10 a piece, while lollipops cost $5 per bag. And I see that I have, at most, $50. That, at most, tells me this is an inequality. I know I'm going to use these three sets of numbers when I write my first inequality. If I look at how the problem is defined it, with the variables, this is going to help me to solve it. All right, looking at a cost constraint, I see that we are again spending $10 for each bag of chocolate. The way we define the variables, C is the number of bags of chocolate, so this would be 10C. The lollipops are $5 a piece, and the variables defined as L, so 10C plus 5L, and it has to be at most $50. That means I have up to, but no more than $50. Another way to say that would be less than or equal to 50. For the items constraints, going through the problem this time, I see that each bag of chocolate can feed a certain number of kids. It says that each bag of chocolate can feed 20 children, while each bag of lollipops will feed 25 children. The other number in here that does not deal with money would be that we need to buy enough candy to feed at least 100 kids. These three numbers will set up my, my item constraint. Setting this problem up, I see that 20 kids per bag of chocolate would be 20C. 25 kids per bag of lollipops would be plus 25L, and we have to have it enough for at least 100, which would be greater than or equal to 100. For the next problem, we're doing the intercepts. Intercepts are where the graphs of the lines cross the axes, both the X and the Y, in this case it's C on all axis. To find the intercepts, you're going to substitute 0 in and solve for the remaining piece. So for instance, to find a C intercept, you would solve the equation that using L is zero. And then to find an L intercept, you would find that the uh, cost is zero for the chocolates. You would say zero chocolates and solve for L. Now when you're doing the intercepts, you want to know where the lines cross the axes, not the shading part. Therefore, we're going to change the inequalities to equations. Again, to find the C intercept for the first equation, we're going to say that L is zero. This leaves me 10C equals 50. Dividing by 10, we see that we can buy five, five bags of chocolate. Now, if we put all of our money into the lollipops, we're going to say that there's no chocolate, or C is zero. Therefore, 5L equals 50, and we can buy 10 bags of the lollipops. For the item constraint, knowing how many bags of chocolate we would need, or how many bags of lollipops, again, to find a C-intercept, L is zero. This is saying if we had to um, give all the children chocolates and no lollipops, how many bags of chocolate would we need? Working it out, we would see that we need five bags. For the L-intercept, saying that there's no chocolates, we would do 25L equals 100, solve it, and we know that we need four bags of lollipops. Now, to do these as coordinates, I kind of got to go through the problems and look. If my graph is elongated, meaning it stretches in one direction, I'd want to make the biggest number go in that long direction. The graph I'm going to use actually is longer side to side than it is up and down, so this tells me that I'll probably make L my bottom axis. If I do that, then I'm going to set it up like this. I'll say that the vertical axis would be the chocolates, meaning that intercept would be 0, 5, and the one for L equals 10 would be 10, 0. Using the same idea, the next intercept would be 0, 5, and then 4, 0. When we graph this, if I do it this way, I'm saying C is my vertical axis, and L is my horizontal axis. Or the number of bags of chocolates vertically, number of bags of lollipops side to side horizontally. So the first thing I need to do is um, label the axes, what I just said, the lollipops are side to side horizontally, and the chocolates are vertical, and I want a number. I see that we need to get up to 10 for the lollipops, and we need to get up to 5 for the chocolates. So if I count by um, ones on the bottom and ones vertically, I'll have plenty of room for this. Now taking those intercepts for the first inequality, I see that we would have 0, 5, and 10, 0. I'm going to plot those two points. So 0, 5 is vertical, 10, 0 would be to the right. 
Now this was less than or equal. If it has the or equal, it's a solid line. So we'll draw a solid line on that, connecting those two points. It was also less than or equal. Less than or equal means that we want to be below the line. We have to spend less than the price. So less than or equal to 50 would be everything that is below or equal to the line. That would be this region. For the second inequality, we see that we have 0, 5 again. And now it's 4, 0. Again, we'll connect it. And again, it's going to be solid because now it's greater than or equal. When you have the or equal piece, it's a solid line. This time, however, it's greater than or equal, which would be everything above this new line. Everything above the new line would be here, including the line. Now to find the solution, which would be the number of combinations that would work for both the cost and the items, we need to find where both items are shaded. We need to look for where we have both the red and the blue. In this case, if we're below the first line, which is the top line, and above the second line, which is the bottom line, this would be in the region in between them. It would be this region right here. This is the section that you would either highlight or darken with your pencil. This is the feasible region. Combinations in here are the ones that you could afford to have. So for instance, we could do combinations such as five bags of lollipops and one bag of chocolate, or three bags of lollipops and two bags of chocolate, or over here, 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 and so on. You could even do points like on the axis here. These would still be in the feasible region. All right, I hope this video helps you to understand how to do the systems of inequalities, and thank you for watching.